Hi, I'm Tom, and I've been a software engineer at Canva for a few years now, and I work on the Canva Apps SDK. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the Canva Apps SDK enables developers such as yourselves to extend and enhance the Canva experience. Um, in this talk, I'm going to quickly run through the Canva tech stack, how we um, structure our React components, and how we got our UI kit into the hands of developers. If my thing. If you're not familiar with Canva, Canva is a design platform with a visual suite, including uh, tools such as presentations, whiteboards, documents, print products, and websites. So anyway, let's uh, start diving into the Canva st tech stack and how we got to where we are today. Uh, at Canva, we have what we call like blessed um, languages, which we consider to be acceptable languages for developing products, features, and tooling when working in those respective domains. By limiting the number of languages we consider to be blessed, um, we gain focus for internal tooling whilst building up specialized expertise across the organization and the product. Um, our backend services are generally written in Java. Tooling is written in Go, Bash, TypeScript, or Python. Python is the go-to for ML models. Um, and finally, TypeScript and React is the language of the front end. But we didn't always use React and TypeScript. In the initial MVP for Canva back in 2013 was effectively framework free. There was this constant rush early on to keep building, the, uh, building new features, and any architectural changes to the product would have to be made alongside aggressive feature development. The original code base could easily accommodate five or so engineers working simultaneously, productively, but we were growing very rapidly as a company. And just for comparison, in 2013, we only had 14 employees, but by 2017, we had over, like, well, we're nearly 250 employees. So when we started thinking of this refactor in 2017, the primary goal was to enable hundreds of developers to work on the code base productively. So by 2017, when we started investigating, uh, we found that the JS landscape had changed pretty dramatically in those years. Uh, like, consider for the fact that React launched in 2013, and that was the same time we actually you know, developed our initial MVP. So you can start to understand how the landscape had changed. And so we had to find which libraries worked with the design patterns that we had developed and honed internally. And eventually, we decided on TypeScript, um, MobX, and React. React, of course, because it was un unopinionated, it was component-based, and it allowed for modular development. Um, for empowering our teams. Uh, similarly, Mob MobX enabled us to distribute the state across the code base with better management. Uh, with more on that in a bit. And finally, TypeScript was selected for its flexible type system, which has only proved to be more and more valuable over time. At Canva, we use a modified MVP pattern, which we call the store presenter component pattern. Uh, this pattern is comprised of like four main parts. Uh, the stores that hold state and don't have access to anything. Um, presenters operate on those stores. Uh, stateless components that aren't aware of those stores, um, and factories that just do all the wiring together. Um, unlike MVP, the presenter doesn't manipulate the component directly and doesn't have access to anything. Um, and the presenter just changes the store, which in turn leads to a re-render of the component. So yeah, the React components are just a view layer. Um, they're just responsible for rendering UI based on the input props and for triggering events. Um, store classes hold state and are used by presenters or components. Um, Presenters contain the logic for the components. They mutate data, trigger side effects, such as analytics, service calls, that sort of thing. Presenters enable us to separate the UI from the business logic. And this makes it just a lot easier to test and segment everything um, when, when you get to like a company as large as ours. And finally, the factory function just wires everything together. Ideally, the factories don't have any side effects or any other logic than wiring. They, they shouldn't be really a reason to test these factories. They just like wiring everything together. Uh, so MobX and React has like, enabled us to like, create this massively composable pattern across the code base. Um, and this has really enabled us to scale out. Anyway, enough on that. Um, back to what I've been doing at Canva. So over the past like three years, I've been work personally working on the Apps SDK, which is a set of APIs that enables developers, such as yourselves, to build unique experiences in the Canva editor. Apps are, di uh, are distinct user experiences. Here we have like the Canva editor. Um, and on the left side, we have a third party app. And everything in that panel on the left is customizable by the developer. The thing is, though, we have great freedom to design apps. 
um, there comes great UX responsibility. So we wanted to provide developers with a UI library that would make building their apps a breeze, whilst meeting Canva's like, strict UX design constraints. So we had a couple critical decisions to make. We could create an entirely new set of UI components that mim just mimics Canva's UI, but wasn't based on the same components that Canva engineers would use internally to build the main product. Um, this would allow us to like, explore options such as CSS style sheets, but it would become like a bit of a maintenance headache, however, as we'd forever be updating components to be consistent with Canva's style, and we'd lose out on any of the localization and accessibility improvements that come part of Canva's internal component library, which is a huge focus for the company. The other option, of course, was to try and export Canva's internal component library or fork it in some way. Um, and this would, this would involve like partially releasing the library under some modified license. And as you can understand, there's a lot of like proprietary code and stuff like that that we don't really want to be um, pushing into the public domain. But it wouldn't mean consumers of the UI library would become would have to be React consumers. Uh, we decided on the latter option. So with a semi-open source license, whereby the library can only be used for apps built for the Canva platform, um, this ended up being the fastest way for us to deliver the UI library. And it does mean that any improvements made internally will be bundled and released to the community. And over time, we want to move to a more relaxed license, so the UI library becomes much more focus, much more um, feature complete, and like more generally available to the wider community as a whole. Over the last year or so, the developer community has added loads of apps integrations, both in our apps marketplace or otherwise incorporated into our platform, and they're now accessible to Canva's 150 monthly active, 150 million monthly active users. So, what's everyone going to build? Um, thank you. Thank you, Tom.